What's up, nerds? It is Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, we are going back. We're doing a classic, guys. It's Math Hammer time. So, uh, I really like this new battle pack, and it's creating some cool math hammering opportunities that we haven't had in a while. And I, uh, I, I'm really excited to play right now. I've been on vacation for, like, half of the past month, so I haven't gotten to play this yet. Um, but I've been theory hammering and math hammering the crap out of it, and I really like it. So, um, that said, um, uh, you know, without me just kind of going too much into my love for this battle pack without, uh, you know, having actually experienced it too much yet. Uh, let's get into some of those sexy numbers, shall we? Um, so, after listening to a bunch of reviews about this battle pack and uh, people talking about it, there's a consistent thing that I heard come up over and over again. Talking about odds on 3d6. It's a very important thing that we need to understand right off the top about how primal dice work. This is not a 3d6 roll. It's not. It's a 2d6 roll, and then you make a decision after that roll of whether or not you are going to roll a primal die. It is an option. It is not something, it's not a decision that you make before your casting roll. So, with that, um, like, yeah, like, this feels like a 3d6 roll when you're kind of thinking about it abstractly, but when you actually kind of get down to it, the things, the, the math comes out a lot different because you're, you're not just rolling 3d6. You have, a, you're rolling two dice, and then you have choices after you see the outcome of the first two and that really changes how you should approach this um there's also strategy involved in this right um there's a few different reasons that you could be rolling primal dice the number one most obvious one is I want to actually successfully cast this spell that I'm trying to cast. My 2d6 roll was not high enough. I roll another die to hit the number. Um, that's the obvious one. Uh, the second one would be, um, I really, like, I successfully cast this spell, but I really want to have some extra insurance on it to stop my opponent from unbinding it. So, I am going to throw an extra die at it, so it's harder for my opponent to unbind. Um, so, that's another possibility, strategically, that we can be looking at there. Um, in addition, kind of a part two to that could also be trying to fish out your opponent's primal dice, um, trying to get them to expend those on spells that you don't care as much about so that you can successfully cast other ones later that you think are more important or drain their primal dice to prevent them from using them for casting bonuses on their turn. Um, and then the final one that I think is really fun is um, trying to primal miscast. And I know that sounds crazy, but you have to remember, when you Primal Miscast, you not only damage yourself, you damage all of the units around you, friend and foe. And the key there being foe, and you want to try and blow up your wizard and take everybody else down with him. Or her, I guess. Uh, some lady wizards could also be trying to unalive themselves. So, um, you know... Those primal miscasts are interesting. Um, let's take a little detour onto primal miscasts for a second. Um, because again, uh, that's where the math is really, I think, most significantly different than what some people I've heard were talking about with um, like 
Pyro miscast in the 3d6 roll versus this kind of like, well, I think of it almost more as is like 3d or 2d6 plus maybe another 1d6. Um, you know, it, it's, you don't, like on your initial casting roll, you don't even have the option to primal miscast. Then after your initial roll, you then know the odds on that first primal die, your third die you're rolling, of what your primal miscast odds are. Now, in addition to that, your odds of a primal miscast, in that case of just rolling your first primal die, are zero unless you have a one showing on either of the two dice that you were rolled for the initial casting roll. So you get to, in many, many occasions, roll that third die at no risk of primal miscast. It just doesn't exist to you because you didn't roll a one in that first pool of two dice. Then if you did have a one in there, then now you have that one in six odds, which is a lot higher than the sort of odds that you would get getting double ones on 3d6. So it's kind of swinging both ways here. Um, depending on your situation, you either have a, a zero chance when making that decision about using primal dice, or you have a one in six chance, which is a lot more than on a 3d6. So very important to keep in mind. Um, it, a lot of this really comes down to the importance of you making that decision on primal dice after the initial casting roll. Uh, because all of this stuff, like it adds an additional decision point when you have a lot more information. Uh, so I guess, I mean, that's really the big thing. Um, I don't want to get too, like too crazy into the actual casting math numbers. Um, like figuring out odds on 2d6 like there's a bazillion videos on the internet about that and i've done probably a couple of videos about that in the past too and i don't feel any need to really rehash that too much um the big thing here is that um when you're rolling that initial 2d6 uh, a lot of the casting values that we're going to be looking at most of the time in this game are like five six seven right um i think the spells that you're going to be more concerned about adding primal dice to are going to be the ones on the higher end of that casting value spectrum where you're looking at like the sevens and eights um because when you hit a casting value of seven you have a 58% chance of success on a seven, right? When you go to eight, it drops to 42%. So, and then as you go up the, the ladder of uh, casting values, it just gets worse exponentially quickly. Um, so there's, there's that big jump and it having a, only a 58% chance of success to hit a seven on 2d6 is generally not going to be reliable enough for a lot of more competitive minded players, the more spike sort of players. Um, you need more consistency than that. And what having the primal dice available to you is going to do is really significantly increase the odds of getting those spells off so you're i didn't i could have i could have gone into the detailed math of what are your aggregate odds of success on a seven if you have primal dice available right so you have the 58 percent odds of success on the initial roll and that means you've got a 40 percent 42 percent chance of failure then you would need to multiply that times the odds of then having an outcome of the primal die 
having a successful cast af based on the role, your initial casting role. So you kind of have to go through all of that. It would be a lot of math. So, um, and, and I'm not sure how useful that actually is, to be totally honest. The, the more important thing is that you kind of go in, you understand, you kind of get what's going on with the odds on 2d6, and you know the odds on 1d6, it's the 16 and two-thirds percent chance um, on for any, like, any one of the given sides of the die. Right, so if you need uh, a five plus, it's gonna be two sides of the die could get it for you, the five or the six. So it's the 16 and two thirds times two is 33%. Um, well, 33 and a third. Um, so um, it's being able to just look at the current situation that you're in and saying, okay, if I throw a primal die at this, what are now my odds of success and what are my odds of my guy exploding? Because that's going to be a problem. Um, the other interesting thing that I want to throw in here, um, I have not seen an FAQ address this yet. It does not appear, rules as written, that when you roll a miscast, that the casting sequence ends. That means that I think if you roll a miscast on your 2d6, so you roll a 2, um, I think you can throw a primal die to intentionally have that 100% chance of a primal miscast and having your guy explode, which obviously has the benefit of him just being a little suicide bomber um so now is it is that like a thing that we're going to go in and like plan like make a game plan around absolutely not are there going to be fun corner cases where that happens and you go like it's just funny and you make that happen yeah that's going to happen and some people are going to have a good laugh and i love that I love that about this game in general. Um, you know, I, I would say, you know, thinking about the um, the defensive side of Primal Dice, all of this stuff really applies the same way. Um, you really need to look at, like, what are my odds of actually unbinding the spell? Um, and also, endless spells are going to be important, too. Like, if your opponent casts an endless spell, like your odds of unbinding the initial cast versus is it going to be that damaging for me this turn? Can I wait till my next turn and then uh, dispel it, potentially using a primal die if needed to get that extra juice to get it off the table? Is that one turn going to be that damaging to me that I can't wait? Um, so I think the obvious conclusion that we really come to with Primal Dice is that these really make it much, much easier to cast spells. Uh, your, your average roll on 2d6 is a 7. Your average roll on 1d6 is 3.5. So when you have that 2d6 plus the additional one, you're going to 10.5 being your average. Now, again, this is essentially like 3d6 math, not like the 2d6 plus 1d6 math that it really is. So it's going to, like, in practice, feel a little bit different than that um, and shake out a little bit different because there's going to be instances where it just doesn't even make sense to throw the primal die so it's going to throw off what these actual averages will look like. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I think that's about it. Uh, it's been nice revisiting this whole math hammer idea. I haven't, I don't know, 
I, a part of the problem, honestly, is that Games Workshop has been doing a pretty good job of uh, balancing a lot of things from like a mathy perspective. So uh, there's not that much to really break down and figure out like this or that anymore. Um, so here we are. Finally, we have a new mechanic that is mathy that we could dive into a bit. And we have done that successfully. So that's going to be it for now, guys. I'll talk to you all later.